<laughs> okay, so historical development of, of our physical theories tell us basically that all our theories have been superseded by more general ones. So it is then to think about quantum theory it, uh, itself as maybe an instance of a more general theory. Um, much of the work has been done actually in extension towards hidden variables or uh, uh, nonlinear extensions or any alternation of the quantum mechanical laws. And in my view, all these attempts are certainly important, should be followed. But these are also attempts somehow to say one or the other notion of classicality. And it's very likely that our next theory will be uh, more crazier than quantum mechanics, not to speak about the classical physics. So that's why I'm looking at uh, the class of theories that actually do share uh, counted intuitive features with classical physics, uh, such as superposition or randomness or entanglement. So this, this work has been done with a PhD student of mine, Oliver Dakic. Um, what defines a system? When you think about the abstract theory, there are two important numbers, uh, integers usually. It's a dimension of the system, which is the maximum number of distinguishable outcomes in a single shot experiment. And also a number of degrees of freedom, which is the minimal number of parameters you need to describe the system completely. So in a set of uh, probabilistic theories, these could be the probabilities for a certain set of measurements from which you can calculate all other probabilities for all other possible measurements. This has, this, uh, has been introduced and discussed, um, for example, in Hardy's uh, five axioms of quantum theories in 2001. So let's look at some examples of most elementary system, one bit system, where there, there are only two levels. Uh, one example could be a classical bit with two possible pure states, zero and one, but also a whole class of um, states where you continuously move from zero to one, weighted one of them with some certain probabilities. In that case, we have one parameter to describe these theories. The next example that we know are quantum theories, a quantum theory um, where we have three real numbers to specify the quantum state, that you can think, for example, of a block vector or three probabilities for spin one half uh, to give a plus result when measured along x, y, and z direction. So although we have three real numbers to specify the state, we know that we can extract only and post one bit of information because we have to specify measuring directions and this will reveal us the post one bit of information, the fact that was raised previously by Scott. But now the question arises, why d is equal to 3, or can we in general think about theories that are very similar to quantum theory, but however, where the single bit, uh, or the state of the single, this generalized bit, is embedded in a high dimensional sphere, d minus 1 sphere, and where the system's state is described now by d probabilistic instead of 3 probabilities. Can we think about these theories? Can they be up in a consistent way? So again, we will have some systems of limited information content because at the end we can extract only one bit of information if we associate measurement with, for example, uh, one direction in this generalized block sphere. Now I'm going to tell you some results on, on, on the possibility to build such theories. And I will use a slightly different notion of the state such that the components, components of this state vector will not be between 0 and 1 but between minus 1 and 1, which is the usual, basically, representation of the block vector, even in quantum optics. So one important ingredient that can help you to narrow these theories is the way how you combine systems to composite systems. Um, and it requires that the complete description of a composite system is given by a set of probabilities for local measurements for individual systems and the correlations between these measurements. So in general terms, you have you know, low quantities associated to the first particle, to the second particle, and the correlation tensor that uh, takes care about all possible correlations between these local measurements. Um, now, if you think that this is a meaningful uh, assumption, you will soon see that real quantum mechanics, or mechan quantum mechanics with real amplitude, does not satisfy this requirement, and actually that you are missing one parameter if you count in that way all the possible parameters. 
uh, continuum in quantum mechanics is uh, completely opposite because you have too much parameters getting out the correlations from local measurements. So some of them must be redundant if you want to keep this. And it's maybe not a surprise for people working in quantum mechanics that this is satisfied in complex quantum mechanics. So local measurements and correlations are sufficient. But what is maybe more interesting that there is a full class of such theories that was put first by Hardy in 2001 uh, we are set, we, which satisfy this condition, and in those theories, the D, the dynamic parameter, scales as L to the power of R minus 1. So the, now the question is, can we think really about these theories in a consistent way? Can we build up some of them? And this was actually basically the question by Scott and Howard's talk. So in order to answer at least something about this, um, this question, I have to say something about the the structure, you can derive some of these uh, points from the more general assumptions, but you can just be inherit this from quantum theory. So you have a product states which are product of local bulk vectors. You think about um, a local transformation being from the SOT for orthogonal transformations with a determined one because you want them to be continuously connected to your identity. There is a pro uh, probability rule, which is a B linear form, as we heard from the Howard. And you have also some requirements on the, from coming from the normalization for pure states, that uh, some of the modulus of, of the length of the block vectors and, and this generalized vector, which is a correlation tensor, must be free. And then you can derive from this a, a very s simple theorem that the state is a product state if and only if um, if the length of the mesh, mesh, uh, of the correlation tensor is one. And if you're above that, you know you have entanglement in the theory. And now I'll tell you a very short proof that D cannot be even uh, if you really want the theory to have entanglement. And this, this is a very uh, easy uh, 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 proof. You, you think about your local vector uh, or your local particle, and you flip all coordinates of the local vector. And if D is even, this is a regular uh, transformation. So you get from x, y, t to the minus x, y, and minus t because the correlations will all change the sign. And then you require the overlap, basically the probability, the overlap between the state before the transformation, the state after the transformation must be between zero and one. And if you put this requirement, you will see immediately that the only possible states in these theories are those which are product states. You will not have entanglement. Now, I'm coming to the, the last slide. Uh, I just tell you that D cannot be larger than three either. Um, the way how you can prove this is by flipping, flipping different block vectors, components, and checking for the positivity of probabilities. But if you want more details, you can ask me afterwards. Uh, and I'm coming to the conclusions that quantum theory is the only theory within the class considered uh, that would allow entanglement. Mm -hmm.